I have you now. There is something else missing. <sighs> what am I going to do with my life? I know. I want to rock! <laughs> hey, my name is Leif. I want to welcome you so much to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice. Today, I'm doing some quick and easy rock rubble scatter terrain. These small rock rubbles are actually quite nifty because you don't need a base and it's an excellent way of getting rid of some of that old scrap XPS foam. So what do you say? Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you how like I did with the process of getting sort of these shards. Now I use my sort of fingernails just to tear off, you know, pieces from uh, these scraps of XPS foam. Now when I sort of have a larger piece and I can't, then I just use an alpha knife and just sort of cut pieces off. And I'm really just trying to make it look as un structured or organic as possible. Now, for the actual base or how we're going to make these rubbles like one piece, I'm going to use some baking paper and then I'm using a low temperature um, hot glue gun. And essentially, I am gluing the bottom of every rock and then ideally the side so that it sort of gets attached to the adjacent rocks. And then I just do this bit by bit until, you know, I have a uh, formation of rubble that I find is good. I let that cool off somewhat and and then you'll end up with something looking a little bit like this. Now I secured these by adding more hot glue until I pretty much had a base that was you know covering the entire thing and this I'm doing mostly because of durability but I always sort of press it down to the baking plate paper just to make sure that it's you know stays nice and flat. Now at this point, uh, you can come in with some aluminium foil and add more textures, but I didn't really want to add more texture. I wanted these rocks to be quite stylized. So with that, I just sort of marched on forwards and uh, continued making these rock rubbles. And it was quite, you know, monotone and quite actually you know, peaceful in a sense, because you got into a zen-like sort of state. And that's what it looks like at the end, and there's the miniature for scale. So at this point, I'm going to start worrying a little bit more about the smaller scale stuff. So I bring in some cardboard and some baking paper, because this will probably get messy. Now I just add all of the little rock rubbles uh, over a paper, uh, probably an OCD right there. Now for this, I'm going to use some quick glue, uh, quick white glue, and some of that uh, mixture of the gravel that I have. Now I'm using a uh, old brush, uh, same old brush that's been with me for a while, just to sort of spread the glue out. And what I'm after here is primarily getting a smaller scale of rocks for every sort of nook and cranny and the bottom of it. It just looks, in my opinion, a little bit better, but it also has the benefit that you get a little bit more weight at the bottom. So that's what it looks like once I went through all of the 15 of them. Now, here I am dropping on some uh, IPA alcohol. Now, I tested this out first just to make sure it didn't melt anything, and it didn't. The reason why I am dropping this on is it breaks the surface tension. So when I come in with the diluted white glue and water mixture it flows nice and evenly into all of that gravel and that's what it looks like and again there we have mr miniature as a scale now i let that dry and then i uh, started mod podging this and this is just a matte mod podge with some black craft paint that i mixed up in a tub and this is going to get messy. And usually when I do this, I like to sort of elevate the crafts from uh, the cardboard just so one, it doesn't get stuck on the cardboard and two, air gets in everywhere and it can dry nicely. So as you can see already there, actually before it's dried, most of the Mod Podge 
Uh, it doesn't actually cover that well, uh, and it might be my mixture, so I just went back in with some black paint after the Mod Podge had dried. Now, once we have uh, that set, we're going to come in with some burnt sienna and some yellow bronze. This is my, uh, I call it my mustard and ketchup technique. Essentially, I'm just stippling this on, and I I don't care where it goes. It I'm literally just stippling it on wherever. I didn't even turn around and sort of look at a rock from all angles. I just simply just stippled it on in, in blind. Looks a little bit funky now, but it will look better once we're done. Now, I'm going to start with some overbrush uh, with a dark gray uh, craft paint. Now, overbrushing is essentially the same thing as dry brushing, but the, the brush isn't uh, as dry. So I'm being quite liberal with, you know, the coverage. I would go somewhere around 80% or so. Now, uh, this specific color is called Rain Gray. Uh, essentially, I'm coming in with a little bit shade brighter gray. And now I'm starting to care more about where I dry brush from. So now I'm coming from the top to the bottom. And at the top of the rocks, I am sort of doing it in a, well, I guess in a uniform way uh, from all directions, just to simulate light hitting the rock rubble from above. And this is what it looks like once we have painted all of them. Now, this is the stage where I get a little bit more careful. This is my lightest gray. I'm really just trying to hit the top ridges and I'm being super careful with what direction I'm dry brushing in. I want to go from top to bottom. And one thing here is also um, this for you who have seen me do these things, you'll, you'll know this uh, procedure. I am taking the highlights to 11 here. I'm really trying to exaggerate the highlights. Now, the reason why I'm doing so is because in the next step, I'm putting these up on an elevated position using some of the toilet rolls that I've cut to sort of act as a pillar for it. The reason for this is that I want uh, the, the wash that I'm spraying on using a spritzer bottle. I want that to be able to sort of run off the, the actual sculpture. Now I'm going in quite heavily with this wash, and this wash is nothing special. It's essentially water, some flow aid, and some black ink. Once that had dried, I come back in with that light gray. And this time around, I'm just trying to sort of define some of the characteristical sort of ridges on each rock. And once that's done, I'm going to come in with some of that flock that I used in the previous video uh, when I did forest scatter terrain. So I'm doing the same thing essentially here. I'm mixing that with some white glue, creating a nice goopy paste. And then I just use a coffee stir stick to sort of, uh, well, put it in where I think it would look nice. And for me, that was primarily the bottom of all of the rock rubbles, but also sort of in the cracks where moss uh, probably, you know, would have a nice time. And I think it's time to look at the final result.
All right, good folks. All in all, I did 15 rock rubbles in various sizes and shapes. This was over, I think, two evenings, and I think it was well worth the investment. So all in all, a win. But what did you think about this week's Scatter Drain build? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like these videos, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing this with any friends that might find these interesting. All of these things will help uh, the channel out and will spread the word to a wider audience. And with that, I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.